Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you for joining me. And today I'm sharing with you a little bit about the fact that I'm interested in patterns. That's how I tend to do research. I look at real world occurrences and try to make sense of them. And it is through that process that I stumbled into a question that I don't have the answer for, but I'm raising awareness of the kind of questions that I would ask. And after anyone had just recently seen our presentation with regards to the pathologist means embama, the link is below if you're interested, one of the points that the embama was saying is that science has become very slow to pick up on observations. They are telling us something that they are seeing. We are not interested from a scientific point of view. When I say we, I mean the large we. And so it has spurred me to remind, remind myself that I must always remain observant. And it is through this sense of observing things that I noticed something today. And so I'm going to take you through what I noticed and try and see if I can make sense of it. Okay, so let's start with some basic things. Well, this is all about me just happening to look at Mortality Watch. And I was just looking at all the countries here. I um, hope this is big enough for you to see. But where you see dark red, it means a higher quarterly excess mortality rate. So these are in quarters going down. So every three months. And what stood out to me was number two here, Qatar where in quarter one of 2023, they still had a 55% excess mortality. Now, if you go right through, you will notice it was high all the way back to quarter one in 2020. But I think that what may have been happening there is that there was a lot of work around preparing for the World Cup, which was, by the way, a remarkable event. And therefore, they had a situation where there were foreign workers who were working, falling off um, high sites and so on. So that would have contributed to excess mortality. So within that framework, the question is, why would it still continue after the World Cup? And just to remind those who don't know, Argentina won the World Cup. It was one of the best finals that we've seen for a long time. This is an image of one of the stadia in, um, in Qatar. Beautiful, um, absolutely remarkable work that they have done. And this is the bit that I'm interested in, the large crowds that were there for this World Cup. So Qatar only has a population of about 2.5 million. So if you have very large crowds coming in, and I'm not sure how big the crowds were for the World Cup, but it would have been significant. And if there is one thing we know so far is that even though they would have had restrictions on vaccination, that does not stop transmission. And so when we actually look carefully at, um, at Qatar, before we get into those details, let's just remind ourselves from the World Health Organization where they are. So this is the map. And you can see here, Qatar, just beside Saudi Arabia here. Uh, just below um, Iran and beside United Arab Emirates. And when you look at their infection rate, you can see here, this was March 2020, where you had a surge in infections, and then January, where you had Omicron surge in infections. And then going down, they settled down to about February 2023. But this part here would have been largely preparation for the World Cup and travel. But if you look carefully, they were not having many deaths, only 690 deaths overall when we look at uh, Qatar. So that's very good. And they therefore would have been very happy with regards to their vaccination program because they kicked in quite early. And this here is taken from our world in data. And it shows that for Qatar, here you have, they technically are at 100%. They exceed 100% vaccination because of non-residents. So they are fully vaccinated in Qatar. And I think it was part of the restriction that you had to be vaccinated to go to the World Cup. I'd have to confirm that. But there's more than anything, I think, what comes out as we look at real 
world evidence is that vaccination, whilst it may have mildly reduced transmission initially for a month or two, it doesn't stop transmission of the virus. And so therefore, and actually some research which I'll come to later at a different presentation is indicating that it may actually increase transmission of the virus, but that's a separate topic. But the point is that you would have wide circulation of infection in Qatar. The question then becomes, what are the outcomes with regards to the effect of a highly vaccinated population being re-exposed to the virus? Because that is what I keep on coming back to. If people don't understand why I raise this, this was the flag that was identified in the animal models when they were looking for vaccines with SARS-CoV. They found on re-exposure, it created specific immunopathology in the lungs. And so our question or concern should be, does this also happen at this stage in terms of the pandemic? Will we see similar patterns when we look at re-exposure with regards to the virus? So when we look in more detail at excess crude mortality in Qatar, we can see here based on their quarters, this here is 2019, then you had 2020 quarter one, 20, um, 20 quarter two, and then it peaks at quarter three in 2020. And then the highest peak here is quarter two, that would be March to uh, June 2021. And that would be that been around the time of the Delta virus. That would have been when they were rolling out vaccines. You send there that excess mortality then comes down. And then it rises again in quarter one, 2022. I suspect this is just a lot of travel into the country. And then in quarter three, pre-World Cup, and then quarter four, that would have been around the time of the World Cup. What's interesting is this quarter one of 2023. All the people have now gone. Why would excess mortality be at this high level, 55%? That's now the question. Now, it really could be an increased trend as to what was happening with regards to workplace issues. But based on the scientific method, one would want to know if these deaths are not related to COVID-19, severe COVID-19, as we can see from the chart, and they are not related to workplace events, why would excess mortality be so high in Qatar? Who is dying? Why are they dying? What is the mechanism of death? These are the kinds of questions that we need to be asking at this point. We need to try and understand why it is that when I look at that worldwide mortality statistics, as I had here, if I look down the first 20 countries, the majority of the top countries with excess mortality are some of the most vaccinated in the world. Now, this may be purely coincidental, but just the same, it raises important points for us to look at from a scientific and a research point of view. Final point, when it comes to COVID-19, I've always maintained that because severe disease, and remember this, this is how you explain it, severe COVID-19 is a problem with the immune system overreacting to the viral infection. Really important. So it's not the virus that causes death. It's the immune system's response to the virus that causes death. Now, if we see similar kinds of immune overreaction, but not affecting the lungs, what kind of disease patterns would we see? Could it, would it lead to excess mortality? These are the questions that need to be answered. My worry is that if we don't find the answers for this quickly, the impact that could have across the world is very, very significant. Again, I apologize for asking hard and inconvenient questions. But the reality is that for those who are truly looking for answers, hard questions are not a problem. We just want to make sure everyone is safe. Have a great evening.